Hey, everybody got you right when you were drinking. It's all right. <laughs> I'm always drinking. That's true. You are. No, I'm not always so, drinking. Well, so am I. Yeah. yeah. But we don't want everybody to think we're like alcoholics no. or anything. We're not alcoholics. We're drunks. There's a big difference. But no, I'm just no, kidding. When the show starts, I'm just we'll, kidding. When the show starts, we'll just get a drink. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's how we do. Hi, Tammy. What's going on? How you doing, Tam? Um, damn, Tam, you the only one in here? Oh, more people. There's got another one just just came in. We didn't know. It's like I, I was wondering if it would be kind of slow because it's like a holiday weekend. Uh, yeah. I mean, at least if you're in the United States, I don't know if like other countries probably. But it's yeah. Memorial Day tomorrow, yeah. so I have the day off work. Woo! So I don't have to like fucking get up early, which is nice. And uh, you know, so three day weekend. So I kind of fig figure a lot of people do, and maybe they're doing barbecues and shit like that. You know? Yeah. So and they don't want to listen to us talking about bullshit like we usually do. Yeah. But you know what I mean. But, but yeah, I, I could be well, wrong. Well, they're with their families. I don't know. Yeah. It's, so maybe it's that. She has soaps, soaps out hiking with her sister and future brother-in-law. So she's like outside and stuff? Yeah, Ew. she's outside. Yeah. <laughs> she has a backpack and everything. I said, I said, I said, she, she, I said are you going to be sleeping outside? She's like, oh, no, no, no. We're going to sleep in a hotel. Uh, like, we're not that serious. Yeah, so, I was no, like, yeah, okay, I, I don't right. believe it. Yeah, all right. It's like, yeah, we'll go walk around outside for a little while, yeah. but then we're gonna go sleep in an actual bed with some actual yeah. air conditioning. Yeah. yeah, that's more my speed. All right, so my boy Zanada, the Desert Fox, <laughs> uh, yeah, he uh, been sending some real good movies lately. Yes, indeed. He sent Bad Lieutenant, King in New York, a shit ton of them. What else did he send? Sent a lot of stuff, but this he recently he sent two more. Both Guy Ritchie movies. Yeah. The Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. And then he sent... Uh, Snatch. Snatch. Which is Guy Ritchie's second movie. This yeah. is... Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels is actually Guy Ritchie's debut film. Yeah. So we saw this movie. Lock, yeah, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels. Yeah, we watched it last night. Watched it last night. I had seen it before, but I you, had, had, you had never seen it. I had it. never seen it. Um, it's good. It's kind of like the train spotting of fucking British gangster movies taking place in the 90s. I remember seeing the trailer for this when it came out, with the some uh, dude with the damn Bren gun. Yeah, yeah, I remember that that thing. That's in the movie. I there was I liked the movie. There were some times where I couldn't follow it because of the fucking British English. I was like, wait, but hold on, what? So I Jimmy had to Jimmy like had sometimes to, had to like yeah, translate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it's it's one that on repeated viewings I, I'd get it. You know what I mean? But I, I enjoyed the movie, enjoyed the whole thing. You know, it's it's a gangster flick. Uh, they're not all good gangsters. Some of these guys are just really shitty at it. Just, you know what I mean? <laughs> Which is funny. You well, know, that's there, where the comedy of... element comes yeah. in. It's it's classified as like a crime, a crime movie, but also like a dark comedy. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? It's got an all-star cast and British actors. And guess what? Sting shows up. Bling them and everything. <laughs> Trying well, to get it up into Yanni. Well, we were laughing about that yeah. because the other movie that Xanada sent us that we just reviewed uh, last week or whatever, and that also had unexpected Sting because... Uh, his he didn't actually show up in person, but like his song was on the end credits. Yeah. But this one now, there's a reason I didn't know this until I watched the um, behind the scenes documentary. It was like an hour long behind the scenes documentary, and the reason why Sting is in the movie is because his wife Trudy produced this movie, and she actually got it made. I mean, she actually got financing for it and got it distributed. Um, and shit like that. So, you know, and made a su substantial um, investment in it. And because, I mean, it's crazy to think about nowadays because so many of the people in it are super famous now, like Jason Statham and Vinnie Jones yeah, and stuff like early, that. This is the earliest Jason Statham movie. It's his first movie. Oh, it? okay. This was his first and he movie. He stands out. He stands out yeah. in the movie. It's like, oh man, that dude, he's something special. Yeah. But he's like, yeah, this was his first yeah. film. And so because there were, quote unquote, a bunch of like relative nobodies in it, yeah. Trudy was like, says to her husband, Sting, well, presumably while she's floating over his lingam, that um, 
<laughs> that, um, well, you know, maybe it needs a little bit of star power, so why don't you be in it? Like, you know, because everybody knows who you are. So she convinced him to, like, do kind of a cameo. He's not in it a lot, but he's in, like, a few scenes, you know what I mean? So that's the reason why Sting is in it, because his wife... And there was, like, extended um, interviews with her where she was talking about it. She said, I'm not ent entirely sure, like, how it happened, but she got hold of the screenplay, because the screenplay was just kind of floating around, and I guess she was interested in producing film projects and stuff. And she read it, and she said, well... It wasn't presented really well. She's like, it was just riddled with typos and it just like looked real shitty. You know what I mean? Like yeah. real unprofessional. Cause like Guy Ritchie, he didn't go to film school. He didn't do nothing like that. And he was a little bit of, as they would say in the UK, a little bit of a tear away okay. um, in kind of a criminal a little yeah. bit. Um, well, who better to write a movie like that? Yeah, so a lot yeah. of the characters in this were based on dudes he actually knew. Yeah. Now, the funny thing about the Jason Statham character, you know when he's introduced at the beginning of the movie, and he's just at this table in the street like selling, I think it's boxes of perfume or whatever it is, yeah, and he's shit. given like a spiel. Um, fun fact, that's pretty much what Jason Statham was doing in real life okay. when he was discovered by Guy uh, Ritchie for this movie. Because yeah. um, he was like, he was out there with his patter, like stealing, yeah. all, like selling all the stolen shit. Like he had done some modeling, I think, too. And he yeah. was like a, a diver. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was like an athlete. And um, but he's like, yeah, I just saw this dude out there, and he's like, and his patter was so funny, yeah, uh, and he was like so charismatic that he's like, oh man, I want this dude in my movie. So he asked him. So this was Jason Statham's like first. He's literally like right off the street, like yeah. in this movie. I was late to the Jason Statham game. Okay? <laughs> I first saw him in um, uh, the the uh, fuck, The Expendables. Yeah, one, two, and three, and then saw him in The Meg. Yeah, Remember Meg, the Meg that, that, that was a fun movie. That was a great movie. Yeah, I they actually Meg. didn't the sequel just come out not too long ago. I don't know. Is he in it? I don't know if he's in it. Okay, but I think I remember seeing a trailer for this. We saw for Meg the in the theater, and yeah. we we're like, "Man, this is a good movie for such a shitty fucking it's movie about fun. a giant like a shark." Like a big giant shark movie. Yeah, I mean, sharks are and always it, scary. And the movie was like half Chinese too, because it, it, it did real well in China. Do you, you remember that? that yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, China invested in it. It was like a half Chinese movie, but it, it fucking it was like all American, man. The way it was, even though it's a British guy. Yeah, starred in it. It was a great flick, but uh, no, I was late to the Statham game. Uh, now I understand it. Fucking Crank One, fucking loved it. We're just we're gonna go see Crank Two. We're gonna yeah, we got, I, I'm I'm dying to see the yeah, yeah. that was the over sequel the for that top. because like yeah. just the premise of it. I'm like, oh my god, that yeah. sounds ridiculous, and I love yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, so it, uh, he he's a great British actor. All right, he does his thing. He plays that kind of same role every, every time I see him but that that's fine that's okay he's working he's working and <laughs> you get to see him you know he's being Jason Statham yeah I mean I think he's great man fucking uh, America appreciates it I'm not gonna put him he's not gonna replace my fucking boy Tom Hardy though alright Tom Hardy can act his fucking ass off I love everything I, I fucking love I got I love Tom Hardy I got a fucking mad crush on him fucking every Tom Hardy movie I've seen I fucking super enjoyed especially his gangster movie Legend yeah. Where he plays Reggie and Ronnie Cray. He yeah. plays both of them. There have been a lot of movies made about yeah. the craze. But honestly, I think... I mean, there was one that was just called The Craze that was also yeah. pretty good. But this one, I think, was better. Yeah. I liked this one a lot and better. Tom Hardy also plays uh, fucking Bronson, who's yeah. like based... It's a story of a real-life famous prison... Uh, most a, famous a lunatic, convict essentially. <laughs> in the British prison system. It's called Bronson, man. If, can, if you haven't seen those movies, see them. Those other British gangster movies. This one is right there with those movies. It's The crazy insane. thing about this one yeah. is that this came out in 1998. And like I said, um, from everything that I can, I kind of remember, because I, like I said, I lived over there for a little while and I was going back and forth there a lot in the 90s. And they love their crime films over there. They love their gangster movies. But a lot of people said, you know, there hadn't really been a good... British gangster movie since The Long Good Friday, which is also a fantastic movie, by the way, with Bob Hoskins. And um, they said they hadn't really been a good one since then, or even really like a significant one. So when this came out, I mean, this was kind of the first one that spawned all of the, like, you know, like Layer Cake with Daniel Craig and like all this other kind of stuff, because they said um, this really like reinvigorated British crime cinema. So all these gangster movies, like Sexy Beast, yeah. uh, you know, which with Ray Winstone. Yeah, Ray yeah. Winstone was yeah. actually supposed to be in yeah. this movie. Yeah. Um, they had actually secured him. I think he was supposed to play uh, Hatchet Harry. Mm -hmm. um, and 
the the process of making this movie, like getting the funding for it, because initially they were gonna get like twenty million pounds to make it, and then they said it just get kept getting slowly whittled down and whittled down until it was like eight hundred thousand pounds, like at the end. Mm. And so, and they said it took so long to get financing and to get made and the casting and everything like that that Ray Winstone. Um, couldn't do it anymore because he had to go on to like another obligation like another job and so he couldn't do it and so they had to like kind of recast like everybody and shit like that but he was actually supposed to be in it so yeah Ray Winston was in Sexy Beast but the thing about it is that this was like the first film and they said that the British uh, audiences they fucking loved it 800,000 pounds I think this cost which is about 1.2 million dollars uh, in American money and it made like 30 million and it was like top of the box office like in the UK and shit like that and it was just like a cultural phenomenon yeah. and it really spawned this whole like i said a whole re, re, uh, what is the word i'm looking for renaissance, renaissance yeah. in um british gangster films that were yeah. like funny like dark comedy yeah. type of stuff it, the movie in the way that it kind of the way that the story's told the, the tone it kind of reminds me of a darker version of train spotting uh, which is another great flick imagine if train spotting was about fucking criminals like that. I mean, uh, it kind of is, but yeah, it, 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 it kind of is about crazy. <laughs> but you know, gangsters. You yeah, know, British gangsters. It kind of reminds me of that. Um, it's got a lot of different kinds of characters, different ethnic groups fighting. You got like Jamaican British gangsters against the fuck the Anglo British gangsters. It, it's good, man. It's, it's good. I liked it. It's a good flick. I love that one. That one character, his name's Rory, and he's like yeah. a like a crime boss or whatever with the afro. Yeah, and just like the shit that he says about it, he's like, is yeah. this some kind of thing that like white cunts do that black cunts don't understand yeah, yeah, or yeah, something yeah, yeah. like that? Yeah. There's so many fucking great lines, and like the yeah. screenplay for this is so fucking funny. Race and ethnicity is super important in crime stories, in, in, in any kind of gangster movies, because criminality manifests itself differently in each one of these cultures. All right, and each culture has different subcultures in it too. You know what I mean? So it's good. You know, like a British gangster is not like Mexican mob. There's big differences. The only thing that unites them is that they're humans. You know what I mean? There are you, you can identify with them all. I can watch I can watch gangster movies that come from anywhere. I even saw one from Nigeria. All right, it was fucking wild as shit. <laughs> okay, but uh, you you can identify with anybody. It's just the the differences is the the damn culture. That it's happening in and the rules that it's happening in and just the lingo and what they think is cool you know it's just it's good you know it's just a good good storytelling you know when it's done right anthony manduka recommends the limey which i've also seen yeah. and you would probably like that too that is also fucking great i really yeah. like there's just there was such a great yeah. run of like british crime movies yeah i love shit like that because well i don't know i'm really a big fan of British English, like for some reason, it's a lot yeah. funnier to me. Yeah, that you know what I mean. So if I like comedies and stuff or comedians, they tend to be Brits because they just have a way with words that a lot of Americans don't have. I can't really put my finger on what it is, but they just have like this really creative way with language that I'm really into. Yeah, and Americans don't do that; they just punch you. <laughs> Although a lot punch of people get you. a lot of people get punched in this yeah. movie as well, including yeah. a woman. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, you know what I mean? <laughs> in what, what was actually, like, a pretty hilarious scene. Because, like, that woman, who I think is pretty much the only woman in the movie, but um, she's, like, she's kind of like a stoner chick, right? And she, like, basically sleeps through the whole movie. And it's, like, she's so such a non-entity that that old dude, like, sits on her, like, because he doesn't even notice she's there. He's like, oh, didn't even see you there, love, or whatever. And then, like, just at one cru crucial point in the movie, she just, like, picks up that fucking massive... What a like gun! It just like starts yeah. blowing it everybody. Away. It's a Bren gun. And then the dude just walks up to her and, yeah. "Where did you come from?" Pow! It yeah. just like punches her in the fucking face. Oh my god, it's so great. This was also the film debut of Vinnie Jones. Um, the hilarious thing about this is that how Vinnie Jones got because I, you know, if you don't know, uh, he was actually a soccer player, a football player, if you're from the UK. So very, very famous. Uh, for that and I believe prior to this movie he had been like had a cameo appearance like on a TV show or some shit like that but when Guy Ritchie wrote the script for this movie the the whole description of Big Chris which is the name of his character was um, a big fucker who looks like Vinnie Jones you know the soccer player yeah. and so then they were like well we saw Vinnie Jones on TV and we're like well, why don't we just ask actual Vinnie Jones to be in the movie 
And uh, and he did. So this was, and it ha now he's actually, he's been in a fuck ton of stuff, Vinnie Jones has. He just has a great look. Like, Big tall guy, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I mean, pretty much he can, all, and the whole shit with like him and his son, Big Chris and Little Chris, that yeah. shit was like fucking funny. Yeah. I could watch a whole movie about those two. Yeah. That They should do a spinoff. Oh, it's probably too late now. Yeah. But it's like, they should do a spinoff of like <laughs> Big yeah. Chris and Little Chris. And the one scene too where, um, you know, where he slams that dude's head in the door just, yeah. like, over and over, and he's just, like, losing his fucking shit. I was watching a thing where they shot that scene, and they said they weren't really sure what Vinny Jones was going to do that day, but they said they had the cameraman in the car, and then they said they put, like, a plank of wood, like, in the door so he'd have something to slam against, because he's supposed to be, like, I think it's um, the, the character Dog is supposed to be, he's supposed to be slamming his head. And then, so they pull Vinny Jones aside, the guy Richie does, and he says, I want you to scare the shit out of the cameraman. <laughs> and, yeah. so, and so basically he just goes and starts fucking freak. And he's like, when he was done with that scene, it's like it was just completely silent because he just like fucking yeah. lost it. And it's like, and it was like super, super scary. And then like the, the, the director and the editor is like, well, I don't think we need to do that over again, do we? It's like, it's just, you know what I mean? Because he just like, he fucking killed it like the first time around. But yeah, he was like super, super scary in that. But so the thing about this, like you were saying when you were watching this, because this is definitely a movie that, um, you know, if, if you're American and you don't really have an ear for British accents or British uh, vernacular, you probably uh, should put on the subtitles. That yeah. help. I always do that anyway because I can't hear that good. But um, but it does help. Now, I will say that this, I wouldn't call the story convoluted necessarily. It's very, it's Tarantino-esque. That's what I was going to say. In yeah. the sense that, well, and yeah. a lot of people said that at the time. Yeah. They're like, oh, he's like the British Tarantino. Yeah. Because where it has, because it's like a whole bunch of different stories that, like threads that kind of all come together in the end. Where it's, well, Tarantino's are more like threads that are kind of like each doing their own thing. But yeah. they're sort of interrelated. And they kind of come together. But this yeah. one everything comes like all the threads come together yeah. at the end but at first like you don't really yeah. know like where they overlap necessarily it is kind of a complicated story so you do kind of have yeah. to um pay attention and a lot of people say too that i mean i've seen this twice i think i saw it in the theater when it first came out um so this is like the second time that i've seen it and a lot of people do advise like you watch it more than once because there's like there's a lot of like stuff going on and there's like a lot of jokes and stuff that you might mix like miss the, like stuff that's set up at the beginning that pays off later on there's a lot of extra dialogue that sounds ad-libbed that's good yeah part of just adding the character which is a, I was watching it and I was like this is almost kind of like Tarantino where the characters are just talk like talking about Madonna or the, you know right. I mean, not as bad if you ask me Sometimes Tarantino took that shit too far because you he's know. a little self indulgent. Yeah. But I'm not shitting on Tarantino. I like Tarantino's yeah. movies, but I but sometimes he does go sometimes a little bit. Sometimes it goes over, right, over right, right. So it never does that. Yeah, the, the dialogue always seems very natural, which I like that, and it always fit the character. Like, come on. They're talking about Papa Don't Preach and Madonna. Some of those dudes were fucking far too old to be Madonna fans. <laughs> far too old, far too fucking mean to be Madonna fans. Which I guess it was supposed to be funny. Yeah. That fucking old bald well, dudes yeah, in the that's... 60s would be following Madonna. Right. And Papa Don't Well, yeah, that's her. what it... Because it's supposed to be like the, yeah, the yeah. incongruity of it is yeah. like what was supposed dudes to be Dudes of that generation wouldn't have known who Madonna was. And then Sarge, ah, oh, that whore, yeah, fuck her. You know, it's been like that, you know. Yeah. That'll never, that'll never be, you know, that, that'll never be as good as the fucking, you know, Sinatra, you know, or something. That'd have been like that. Yeah, well, speaking of Madonna, she was actually, uh, she married Guy Ritchie, like, later on. Yeah, you were They were married that. for, like, eight years. Yeah. Well, the funny thing about it, she met him after this movie came out because she saw this movie and she really dug it. And she really particularly liked um, the soundtrack, and she asked Guy Ritchie or, like, you know, the production company or whatever, would you mind if... Because she has her own record label, Maverick, um, and said, we can we release the soundtrack for this movie, like, in the U.S.? So that's how um, they ended up getting together. You're going to love this story, though. Do you know who was responsible for getting Lock, Sock, and Two Smoking Barrels a distribution deal in the U.S.? None other... Than Tom fucking Cruise. Tom Cruise, okay. Interestingly. Tom this Cruise is, yeah, like. this is a crazy story. Okay. So what ends up happening, like I said, it opens in the UK and it went like gangbusters. Like everybody's like, oh my God, it's the best British crime movie ever or since The Long Good Friday, which is, that's another one we should probably do. A couple of people have brought up Snatch too. Xanada also sent us Snatch, which is the follow-up to this movie. Okay. Um, and so that's the next one we're going to do. All right. 
Um, but yeah, and that has Brad Pitt in it. And Brad Pitt actually liked this movie so much that he called Guy Ritchie and said, hey, if you're making another movie, I'll be in it, which can, yeah. I mean, that must be fucking crazy for right, like yeah. a young director, like having Brad yeah. fucking Pitt calling you. Yeah. But so what happened was, uh, so the movie comes out in the UK, it's a huge success, and um, Trudy, who, you know, Sting's wife, She's sitting there talking about, she's like, we weren't really having a lot of luck, like, getting a uh, distribution in the U.S. Because, like, you know, we'd have screenings there and people were like, eh, you know what I mean? It's like, it's, it's just too British, you know what I mean? Like, they couldn't really see that it was going to be, like, successful or anything like that. And so she happened to be friends with Tom Cruise. And she said, I guess her and Sting had, like, an apartment. They owned an apartment in the U.S. somewhere, and Tom was staying in it at the okay. time, like, because he was shooting a movie, like, yeah. wherever the city it was. And so she called him up and said, hey, I have a big favor to ask of you. We're doing a screening of this movie that I produced, and we are trying to get, like, executives interested in it, um, but we don't really think anybody it's going to get any traction. Can you just go? Don't tell anybody you're going. Just show up and watch the movie. And they're like, just you being there will we'll probably be like, holy yeah. shit, yeah. yeah. So that's what he did. And, and basically she's like, I'm sorry, but it's tonight. Like, you have to yeah. go. And he's like, okay, I'll do it. Um, he's like, not much, you know, he, he's like, you didn't give me much, uh, you know, yeah. advance warning. But okay, right. I'll do it. So he goes just, like, on the down low and watches it. And then, like, after the screening, everybody saw it. It's like, oh, my God, fucking Tom Cruise is in it. They're all yeah. getting their cell phones out and shit yeah. like that. And he basically went up there and he said, oh, my God, this is, like, the bre the best, like, um, the breast movie. The breast movie. <laughs> There's no breast in this yeah. movie. But um, <laughs> They didn't call you. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't. Uh, they, didn't uh, they didn't call my breast to be in this yeah, movie yeah, either. Because yeah, uh, each of them has their own cell phone. Yeah, that's going to be our <laughs> We're opening OnlyFans soon. So breasts will be there. <laughs> The press will be there. Well, yeah, it's funny because we were talking about both of them. Well, yeah. I hope so. Yeah. We don't want one to get jealous no, of the other yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, so he stands up and then he says, like, this is, like, you know, the best movie I've seen, like, this year or, like, in a long time or whatever. And you guys would be idiots if you didn't buy it. So it did end up getting a deal. I think it was Polygram that ended up buying it. Unfortunately, it didn't really do all that great. Like, I think it did make some money. But it, um, basically, it got, like, really good critical uh, reviews and it got like something of a cult following like even from the start so it didn't like wasn't a smash success like it was in the UK but it did kind of put Guy Ritchie on the map you know what I mean so then that was like largely Tom Cruise's doing that did that but you know they made money at other places too so it wasn't to you know and Guy Ritchie ended up being I mean shit he made like the Sherlock Holmes movies and all that other kind of shit later on so he's like a massive fucking success nowadays but yeah the what you were saying earlier about the a lot of the dialogue being um improvised some of it was but i was watching a lot of the interviews with the actors and um you know they said obviously they all got together and they all got along really well and they all had a good handle on their character and it's like a lot of the stuff that's in there he's like even though it sounds very naturalistic it was all in the script like that like guy Ritchie wrote it like that but it's like, but he was pretty open to, imp like, if you wanted to improvise something like Basil, like, he would, if he liked it, he would keep it in. You know what I mean? But yeah. a lot of that, they're like, a lot of it, it doesn't sound like it, but was written in the script exactly as it was. Other than, like, I think there was a couple, there was a little scene where, um, where two of the, where Nick the Greek and, um, and the other guy, um, shit, what was that character's name? Eddie? No, it wasn't Eddie. It was, it was one of the other ones. But he was like, um they were standing at that like uh, jukebox or the cigarette machine or whatever and he said something as like kosher is Christmas yeah. and he's like the kosher Jews is Christmas Christmas is oh, the guy's name was Tom I don't know why I didn't remember yeah, that yeah. but he's just like <laughs> the Jews don't celebrate Christmas yeah, Tom. Yeah. like I think that was that shit was ad-libbed and like yeah. some of the other stuff was but largely it was kind of written in the yeah. thing like that it sounded like it was pretty natural, though. Like it was all kind of yeah. Natural. Because I think, like I said, it was this big ensemble cast, and they said they all got along really well. Like some of them had known each other previously, and I think they just each had such a good handle on their characters that you know that they just kind of that it all just kind of like flowed naturally. The funny thing about it too was that the character, like the guy who played Tom, he was like originally the guy who played Nick the Greek, like the big heavy guy. He was supposed to be Tom because the running gag throughout the movie is that Tom is fat. 
So it's like originally the actor was supposed to be fat, but then the guy that they cast to actually play Tom at then was this really tall, lanky dude. Mm-hmm. And but they left all the fat jokes in because they thought it would be funnier because it's like obviously he's not fat. So it's like they had like a bunch of jokes in there of people being like, "What have you been eating, son?" And it's like <laughs> they're like calling him fat and stuff like yeah. that, even though he's obviously not fat. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah, that's. That wouldn't have been funny if the dude was fat, because it's like, well, yeah, obviously he's fat, like, so people are just pointing that out, but because the dude was, like, obviously so much skinnier than everybody else in that video kept calling him fat, so I just thought that was, like, funny. And also, the ending, because you said, well, they kind of left the ending hanging, yeah, which they kind of did, but I like that. Now, originally, the ending, um, it ended right where the gang, like, they got all the money, and then they drove off in the car, and then, you know, and everybody's dead, so they're like, woohoo, we got away with it, you know what I mean? Because everybody pretty much gets killed, spoiler alert. But, um, you know, so they get the money, and then, like, the it would pull back, and then you saw Vinnie Jones' character, Big Chris, and his son, Little Chris, in the car, and they're just like, oh, we're going to go get that money, and then they were going to follow the car, and then it was then it ended right there. So they did some screenings with that, and they're just like, the audience didn't like that. They're like, what the fuck? It's like, it seemed like there should be more story there. Like, it just kind of ended in the middle of nowhere. So then they shot the scene with um them finding out like him like Vinny bringing back the bag and saying like oh i brought this but there's no money in there it's just like that book that says how much those antique guns were worth yeah and then they had just told tom hey go get rid of those guns because that's the only thing that ties us to this crime and he's just like about to dump them into the thames and it's like the phone's in his mouth and it's like ringing it they were shut up it's ringing (laughs) they were too ancient like i think they were richard and harrison or harrison and harrison what were they uh yeah harrison and harrison harrison and harrison Harrison, yeah. yeah Um, Fowler's fucking hammer operated fucking Fowler shotguns uh, that were all fucking damascened and stuff you know engraved and shit <laughs> but uh, they were treating them like shit too they were being rough on them and everything you treat them like gangster guns because they didn't realize they knew what they were it no. Tur- turns out you know when they got the damn collector's book that said what the value was, it was it, they were about a half a million dollars each yeah, or like or, or like a quarter of a million, or I think it was like three hundred thousand pounds or something like that. Like yeah, seven, I think one of them was it, it went from three hundred and twenty thousand pounds to seven hundred and something thousand pounds, and they had two of them. Yeah, so about a half a million dollars of fucking. I think a pound was almost two dollars back in those days, in the nineties, maybe yeah. dollar seventy five. They probably would have had about a half a million, five hundred yeah thousand each. And they, like I said, they literally just told. The guy yeah. like to they were go gonna throw him in a river in the shit. Thames. They yeah. just go throw him in there, and he was just but, but like it fell on the on the yeah. ledge, and then he's like, oh shit! Like he's leaning down, yeah. getting, it, and then the phone rings, and it's in his mouth, and he's like, oh no! And yeah. then like it ends, and I was like, I thought that was a great ending. Honestly, yeah. I thought that was super. Funny. There's lots of fucking Britishisms <laughs> about guns in them. They don't. There are some good guns in there. Uh, the the, uh, the Jamaican gangster, what was his name? The guy that could spit fire. He's British as shit though, even though he was fighting for the Jamaicans or fighting with the Jamaican crew. Who, the one with the afro? Yeah, what was his Rory. name? Rory, yeah. Rory, Rory had Breaker. A, he had a stainless, he had a modern stainless Walther PPK. Uh, they just had basic stuff. They came up with an old World War II bread gun, 303 British, you know, problematic fucking mags. They were good back in the days, but they're just not modern. Um, and they said things that people that don't know much about guns think. Like, well... A professional uses a knife. You can actually cut somebody up with this. Um, guns are just for whole, basically keeping you know, keeping somebody frozen. You just point at it, they freeze, and they do whatever you say. Ah, uh-uh, no. And maybe in Britain you can point a gun at somebody and they'll just freeze, but not in America. If you point a gun at somebody, they attack. All right, they force you to shoot them. Uh, I got I've seen thousands of videos of that. You go on a, go on a channel called Police Activity on YouTube and see how Americans react when you point, when somebody points a gun at them. They just go berserk. And you're forced to kill them, or just shoot them up to pieces. You know, so uh, no, they're not you. They're not any good for that. Not here at least. You pull a gun so, gun on somebody, you're gonna have to shoot them. Well, the whole thing about yeah. the the antique guns in this one, like I said, I think that's why. This story, maybe the first time you see it, like, it seems, like, kind of convoluted because for a long time you're not really sure, like, how all of these disparate plot threads are going to tie together because the guns don't initially have anything to do with the main gang, like, at the at the center of the story. It's just Harry the Hatchet, who they own, uh, you know, or Hatchet Harry or whoever, like, the guy that they owe half a million pounds to 
actually wants those guns and hires these two idiots to like go steal them and because the dudes are idiots they didn't realize that they were like antiques and so they sold them yeah. to this other good so when they're buying guns for their heist they just buy these guns like not knowing because yeah. they're like making jokes about it. it's like wait did these even work you know what i mean yeah, it's like people seem... are gonna laugh at me when i kind yeah, of they, when they, i pull it on somebody they didn't seem to have any <laughs> concept of, of of guns being worth anything in terms of antiques well yeah i mean like it's i said not... these are like all kind of like yeah. working class yeah. dudes so it's like you wouldn't really they wouldn't really think they wouldn't know anything about antiques yeah. or anything like that so it's just like so that I mean and that was like inherently yeah. what was funny about that situation is just to them it just looked like an old gun they wouldn't yeah. really think it was worth anything my family's from Mississippi and when my dad passes I'm gonna inherit a bunch of confederate stuff a confederate gun cabinet alright fucking there are some confederate era fucking uh fucking um uh muzzle loading rifles in there and you would think that stuff is worth a lot of money the rifles yeah they are a little bit but what's worth a lot of money is a confederate era toy gun that my dad has it's only that big and it fires a percussion cap it's a toy gun for a little kid you could put a real percussion cap from a real gun of the back in those days and fire it and it'll go pow you could even put a rock or something in the barrel and it will shoot that that's how that's how kids played back then all right uh, that thing's worth many, many times more than a real well, gun. Well, toys, toy. toys are yeah. always tend to be more, not yeah. always, but they tend to bring more auction because, you know, yeah. kids play with them and they and get beat up. Away. Yeah, so it's like kids away. don't keep them. Yeah, they, they play with them and they get yeah. broken. So if you have something that's like mint from that era, yeah, yeah. then it's yeah. It's not mint, but it's usable. Right, and but it's it's so yeah. so it's going to be like... It's um, worth a lot of money. Because, you know, if you buy like a really nice gun, I mean, obviously yeah. going to take care of that. Like yeah. that's an adult would have it and they would take care of it and pass it on maybe to their next family yeah. or whatever so they realize the value of it but a toy it's yeah. just kind of like a man eh, you know what i mean that's the, why people pay like all this money for like old lunch boxes yeah. from the 80s and shit like that and the gun cabinet's worth a lot hand-blown glass and everything in the doors it was kind of a common gun cabinet in the day but the handmade and it has uh, some kind of confederate slogan on it i forgot what it said but uh something or other, something or other fucking dixie or dixie strikes down union some shit like that they, they said stuff but that's worth money too i don't know how i'm gonna get it here well, you have to figure something out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, so something else in this movie, like, another fucking repeating gag that I thought was, like, really funny was the whole thing with um, Rory's glass-topped coffee table. And, like, every time Nick would come over, like, he broke it, and then, like, he kept... <laughs> Like putting his glass like glass down on it and it goes through the thing, and they said we that wasn't originally in the script that whole like running gag with the broken coffee table. They said that actually happened because the coffee table actually did break uh, when they were shooting the scene and they didn't uh, have time to like get more glass. So they said, well, let's just write it in where we'll just make it like this running joke where he just keeps like dropping the fucking drink through there cause he thinks the glass is there. And there's also one great scene too. And I didn't even notice it until I was watching like some clips of it over again, where Rory is like coming at the camera, like telling that guy, I'm going to kill you. I'm going to get, you know, it's like that whole uh, monologue that he gives. And he like actually steps through <laughs> the fucking coffee table that doesn't have a glass top on it. And it's like, I didn't even notice that when I was watching the movie the first time, but he's just like walking. He just like, like it's the most casual thing in the world. He just like steps through the fucking coffee table without saying anything about it. But yeah, I fucking love that. So, so yeah, I mean, like I said, I love British movies. British crime movies are the fucking best. I mean, we, we haven't really, we've done some, but there's a lot that I think you would really like that you haven't seen. Like I said, you probably need to see Layer Cake because um, you like Daniel Craig and Daniel mm -hmm. Craig is in it. And I remember him being great in that. I think I saw that in the theater too. Um, somebody mentioned The Limey, which is, which also fucking great. That was a great movie. Um, and maybe you like go back to like some of the old ones. Like I said, like, um, The Long Good Friday. Mona Lisa was good too. Cause, uh, Bob Hoskins was in that as well. But I remember really liking The Long Good Friday. And a lot of people think that's like the bre best Brit British crime movie like ever yeah. made. So. Just makes me stand by British actors, man, or superior actors. They're fucking great thespians, man. They take I, the shit serious. They do. Well, and yeah. I really liked, like I said, there's a yeah. there's an hour-long documentary. It's actually on YouTube, um, if you were just making of Lock, Sack, and Two Smoking Barrels. And they interviewed, like, pretty much all the principal um, actors from this. And they're all just delightful people. Uh, like, yeah. I love that they had Nicholas Rowe was in this, who 
I hadn't seen him in much of anything since young Sherlock Holmes, like back in the 80s. Yeah. And he was in this as like one of the weed dealers. Yeah. Because I, I recognized him immediately because I saw young Sherlock Holmes probably like 40,000 times yeah. when I was younger. And I take the piss out of fucking Sting, but Sting is fucking very talented. Okay? Yeah. I know he's trying to get up in your girlfriend's skirt with his language <laughs> with his tantric sex and all that fuck. I think he was trolling back in those days. There's something about his face. I don't think he was all that enlightened fucking bullshit. I think I think he was trolling. He was, I think he was trolling the American middle class. Uh, but uh, he's, he's a good, real good actor. And he's good in this. He doesn't have a big part. But when he shows up, he's very believable. Yeah, it's like a cam- like a cameo. He's probably only yeah. in two or three scenes. He's like yeah. the dad of the of the guy that loses the five hundred thousand yeah. pounds at the beginning, like leading to the whole yeah. situation. Sting's best work, if you ask me, is like The Bride, real good, and uh, Brimstone and Treacle. That's a fucking man. Cut. He's a he's great in Brimstone and yeah. Treacle. That's a fucking yeah. great movie. I think we did review it at some. Did we review it? No, I don't know. Maybe it'll go to... I mean, I, I reviewed it for my thing. Like, I, I don't know if I made a video about it, but I for sure, like, wrote a big, long, like, and Brimstone and Drake in, in Brimstone and Treacle, he plays a demon. Yeah. A young, charming demon who talks his way into your house and tries to just talk... Just talks his way into total control over your fucking family. Yeah. It's a great fucking move. If you haven't seen it, see it. There's it's a couple good. versions of it, like yeah. I said, because I think we've talked about this before, but they did it on... Um, play for today or whatever it was it's dennis potter uh if you know who that is singing detective pennies from heaven um but yeah and this so, but this was like the movie version that they yeah. did but there is another version of this it has some of the same actors in it that they did like for tv i think it was the the I guy saw playing the, the dad i only saw the movie version had staying yeah. in it and the great cast and he's just the he's kind, it's of, kind of fucked up it's kind of he's a, fucked up but in a weird way he's kind of lovable because he's yeah. uh He's very charming, and you know he's fucking this family over, and he's doing it. He's he's a demon. He can't help it. He's not a human. He's just like a parasite, just trying to talk his way in to your shit. You know what I mean? And, and, <laughs> and it's a, it, you're not sure. I was I wasn't sure. Is this guy just a con man? No, paranormal shit happens. Too. He, he's a demon. Yeah. Well, like I said, in yeah. the this was originally it was originally written out as a stage play, mm-hmm. and in the stage play, it's very obvious he's a demon because he yeah. has cloven hooves. Okay, yeah. But in the movie... Um, you can't really, you're not really sure. They leave it ambiguous yeah. as to like what his fucking deal is. Like, you're led to believe that he's a demon, but he just looks like a person. Well, storms would happen when he's trying to molest right. the girl, and the, he molests this girl who's an invalid, and, and it snaps her out of her coma. That's a weird shit. It was some demon. Yeah, he was a which, demon. Which, like I said... Yeah, he was a demon. And then as soon as he got out of the house, was expelled from the house, he, he, he latched onto somebody else, and that's the end of the movie. Yeah. That's what he did. Like a parasite. I always like. It's like somebody you would know. It's kind of like people that out of your life. Yeah, I knew a dude like that. Yeah, couldn't get rid of his ass. You know, he's like one of those. But like extreme, put that shit up on eleven. You know. Since we're talking about Sting, we should probably do Quadrophenia one of these days. Haven't seen it. You've never seen Quadrophenia? Haven't seen it. I really, I like Quadrophenia. Probably pretty good. It's got got mods about mods, isn't it? Yeah, mods versus rockers. Mods versus rockers. Yeah, I'd like to see that. Yeah. 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 They were the original Cafe Racers, the rockers. Yeah, Sting plays. What's his character? We call name? them it's, bikers, but you know. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's what's his character's name is Ace. I think isn't it? Yeah, he's the one that they sing that song Bellboy about. Yeah, because he's supposed to be like the coolest dude ever, and then they see him like working as a at a hotel as a bellboy, mm-hmm. like, and they're just like, oh well, he's not cool anymore. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I remember that. That's like one one of the main scenes that I remember from that. But uh, but yeah, so. So, I, yeah, I feel like there's, like, a whole unexplored thing of, like, British crime movies that you would be really into. Yeah. And so this is, like I said, there was a lot of them, like, in the 70s and 80s, and all of those are worth watching, too, like, all the ones yeah. that I've seen. I've seen a lot of them, like I said, because I lived over there for a while. But um, this one, Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, was kind of, you know, it, in the late 90s, this was the kind of thing that kicked off the whole... Because now, if you see ones like Sexy Beast or something like that with all that crazy editing and, um, you know, just all the... Because this... Like I said, Guy Ritchie didn't go to film school, so he was basically told, like, the cinematographer and everything like that, he's like, well, don't worry about if it, like, advances the plot or anything like that. Like, just, if it looks cool, shoot that. Yeah. (laughs) Like, pretty much. Um, And the editor that he got was uh, a dude that did music videos and, like, commercials and stuff like that. So it does have a little bit of, like, a music video sensibility to it, in parts. I think, like, 
in a lot of ways though i think it's like fairly traditionally and it's not like super frenetic or super i think the editing got like much faster like later on this one was pretty standard but it did have some interesting uh sequences like that were i guess unusual for the time that were copied a lot later on oh, also right. had some great music and it. it had stone yeah. roses in it the stooges yeah um you know yeah some great shit yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna say i'm just gonna repeat what i said in the in the beginning of the review it's a british gangster movie that's on, on at the same quality level and entertainment level as train spotting it's like the fucking train spotting of british gangster flicks it's a good flick it's a great flick and it's funny. I it's forgot funny. how yeah. fucking funny yeah. like a it, lot of the dialogue in this is. It's not my favorite British gangster flick. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna give that to Legend. Yeah. But uh, it's still up there. This is a very respectable flick. Yeah. Yeah. And like I said, I had forgotten because I hadn't seen it in such a long time. Yeah. But I had forgotten how fucking funny. I mean, I was just like busting up. Like at some of the fucking lines in this are yeah. so fucking great. I had forgot. I remember this being good, but I didn't remember it being that fucking hilarious. Like some of the fucking shit that they say and like some of the yeah. well because the funny shit comes from them being like completely out of their depth really and not really knowing what's going on and it's like what it, I the two guys I would also watch a, a movie about the two uh, scousers that stole the guns and like didn't know they were antique like those two <laughs> like the one dude with the big floofy hair yeah. that gets like shot if I, those two guys were completely stupid and they yeah. were like super super funny yeah all the gangsters are of different skill levels and different expert levels of expertise right ranging from fucking morons <laughs> to dudes that are pretty comp pretty competent. yeah i mean most okay. of they're pretty small time yeah. and so, that's uh, the so, thing they're kind of going up against was, somebody that's like a yeah. big like crime yeah. boss and they think yeah. that they can like well that's what i was gonna say this is all happening within the theater within the realm of british crime which is not quite as ruthless as american crime this is not they're not as ruthless as the Italian mob, and nowhere near as ruthless as the Mexican mob. Those guys are fucking top echelon. I mean, those guys are fucking mean. You know what I mean? They're not that mean. They're, by American standards, these are petty gangsters, petty criminals. But they're they just mostly stealing shit. They're fighting each other. They kill each other. But they're mostly just stealing shit and weed and stolen, trying to pass stolen goods and shit. That's petty crime by American standards. Over here, massive drug fucking shipping, human trafficking, you know, enslaving women and selling them, and children too, cutting people apart while they're alive and recording it. You know, it's like in, the Mexican mob does not fucking play. All right, they make a point that if you come up against them, it's a fate worse than death. It's very effective. Very effective. It's just a different situation. There's still criminals that are just in a different place, you know, in a different culture. It's a good, it's a good flick, though. It's a good flick, you know. Well, the thing, I think the reason why a lot of the British like crime movies yeah. is because, well, and particularly in their movies, and not so much in real life, but yeah. um, in their movies, there's a sense of, like, the lovable rogue yeah, they're about kinda, them. they're kind of like regular guys. Like, if they just yeah. made a movie about, like, horrible motherfuckers yeah. that was, like, cutting people, it's like, nobody would root for them, yeah, and it's right. like, it wouldn't be funny exactly. or anything like that. So it's like... They're the kind of like heroic underdogs. Yeah, and, yeah. and I think that's kind of why there's such been such a long tradition of, like, British crime movies where... Yeah. You know, where they're almost kind of like, I don't want to say lionized necessarily, but a lot of people kind of root for them, like yeah. in the movies, even though technically they're criminals. Yeah. And even though technically sometimes they kill people too. Yeah. But like you said, it's kind of like rooting for the underdog because yeah. a lot of them are kind of like, um, you know, maybe incompetent or going up against yeah. um, forces much larger than them. Yeah. And you're the, kind of like hoping that they win. The differences between the criminal cultures, between Europe and, and, and American continent. It was talked about and kind of demonstrated in the other movie that, I, that, I, that my favorite, which is a Tom Hardy flick called Legend. Uh, fucking one of the Cray brothers, the gay one, tells the the Italian mob that he likes to fuck boys, you know, young guys. He likes guys, and they don't know how to react to that. The Italian mob, they they're not about that, okay. But you see, the British didn't have that those kind of rules, especially that motherfucker. Was, was that Reggie or was that Ronnie? I can't remember which one was. Because no, he was just a nut, okay? He just said, he just constantly told the truth. He didn't, 
he didn't veil the fact that he was gay. He, but he was big intimidating, motherfucker. And the Italian mob was just like, they weren't sure if he was telling it, if he was serious. And they were like, oh, all right, you know what I mean? But that shit would not fly in the United States with the with the Italian not mob. Not back then, no way. Fuck no. No. I don't well, think they would have killed you over it, but they wouldn't have done business with you. Yeah. But they were in England when they were talking to him. And they, yeah, they just so they were like, like, they weren't really on their home Yeah, service, they weren't on their home so. too, and they were like, oh, okay, all right. If that's what you like. Well, and like I said, you know. maybe I don't know because I kind of feel, I mean, the British have like this whole like culture surrounded, like taking the piss. Mm-hmm. So a lot of the times you don't actually know if they're being serious. They're being serious. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> I, think that, I think in that movie. Because a lot of, because they're very sarcastic, but it's like you can't really Yeah, tell. I think in that particular movie, I think the Italians thought he was, that he was that fucking, he was taking, that that he was he was fucking, fucking with them. Because they knew about that from prison. The Italians would right. know all about that from like right. prison. Yeah, that would happen in prison. You know. Whereas I kind of feel like the Italian mafia was much more like a traditional honor-based yeah. type of culture. Very family-oriented. Right. They all had wives. You had to be married to be in the mob a lot of times. And you could have girlfriends, but you had to be married. You had to have a family. Uh, and uh, you had to be hetero. There's fucking, you know, there's no way you'd ever get anywhere in the Italian mob if you were gay. Fuck no. They wouldn't deal with you. You would consider you to be subhuman. They were Catholic. Yeah, that was another They thing. were Catholic, yeah. Richard Brown said people used to admire the craze. Yeah, they did. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. It's like I kind of feel like there's a whole. Yeah, I'm not so not so much now. I don't know, like, because like I said, I haven't been there in a long time. But I did kind of feel like there was a through line through British culture where they really liked, like I said, petty criminals, and even yeah. not even petty criminals, like sometimes murderers and stuff like that. Yeah. But usually gangsters. They really yeah. like. I mean, I guess you could say that'd be Americans too, because it's like we watch f- fucking movies about the Italian mob, and people love that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I, I don't know how much people, like, admire those people. I don't think it's quite the same, I th- but... I think they did kind of... I think people were kind of envious of the freedom that they had. They were just free yeah. to break laws and free to do whatever the fuck they wanted. Whereas I kind of feel like in the UK, like I said, yeah. it was more like a lovable rogue thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, like sticking it to the man type of Quintess- situation. Quintessential American mafia movie, of course, the Godfather series, but more modern. I would, The more modern version, would I would say, would be fucking Goodfellas. That's that's a great fucking the movie. Goodfellas, yeah. Goodfellas would be the the American version of a of what this movie is. This is, there's a lot of parallels between Goodfellas and this one. Yeah, it's a different tone, but yeah. Also the, I mean, this this movie. Film. Yeah, I mean, I guess yeah. Goodfellas. I haven't seen Goodfellas in a while, but Goodfellas was great, man. Very, I remember this one being yeah. a lot funnier than Goodfellas, but yeah, maybe yeah. Goodfellas was kind of funny. Goodfellas was good too, though. Yeah, yeah. That's a we have we we haven't reviewed Goodfellas. No, we should we? see it. We did got we did the Godfather movies. Yeah. But I don't know, we haven't done good. If anybody wants wants us to review, I wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing Casino. Casino also, was good. Also. I really liked Casino. Yeah, Casino was good. But if anybody wants us to do Casino or Goodfellas, you send us the Blu-ray. We'll do it. Yeah, but like I said, the next one, Xanada oh, sent yeah. us this movie and Guy Ritchie's next yeah. movie, which was Snatch, in which Brad Pitt, like I said, because he liked this movie so much, he straight up called Guy Ritchie and said, "Hey, I'll be in your next movie." Um, cause that's just what he does. Apparently, L- apparently he's done that more than once. Like he said, he likes to go like, especially if he sees like a first time director and he really digs what you did. Like he will call that person personally and be like, Hey, I want to be in your next project. I'm like, that's kind of cool though. You know what I mean? That's kind of cool that he would do that. Yeah. Like as famous as that bitch is, that bitch is. So, um, in snatch, I don't know if you know this, but he plays an Irishman. Okay. Um, it's pretty fun. Well, the, w- <laughs> There was kind of a big joke because it's like he's he has this crazy Irish accent, but you can't. The joke of the movie is you can't understand a goddamn word that he's saying okay. because it's just kind of yeah. You so see, and you, he's like a crazy person. You were talking about um, <laughs> Angelina uh, Brad Pitt, and it reminded me of fucking Fight Club. That's another masterpiece, man. I want to see that one again. Yeah, I got we d- now Club. we did review that one. We reviewed it. I, yeah, we have we it. I think Club, I think yeah. I have it on Blu-ray. Or did we read that? I think I have it. I think we own it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure we own it. That was a fucking, I don't remember if somebody sent it to us or if we bought it. That was a masterpiece, man. I, I think wanna, somebody sent it to us. I've only seen it once. I really enjoyed it. I want to see it again. Uh, Zach says, oh my God, please do Casino. I love that movie. Send us the Blu-ray, bitch. I love that movie, too. Yeah. I think I saw that in the theater also. See, we got paying customers that have sent us Blu-rays. We've got a whole stack of them. They're in line. So the yeah. only way we can guarantee that we'll get to it is if you send us the Blu-ray, and then we'll put it in line. Although I think we're caught up, except like the next one we have to do is Snatch, because like okay. I said, that that one came with this one. Like They both came together. Okay. And um, So we'll do Snatch next, because I've been wanting to rewatch that one, too. I, I've seen yeah. Snatch as well, but... 
that it's been a while since I, I think the last time I saw it was when it came out because I'm pretty sure I saw that in the theater. Gotta well. see Crank Two though. We, yeah, we also need to see Crank Two, and yeah. you know, and honestly, it's I don't know, like it, because people have been sending us movies too, which, which is awesome, and so we're doing that. I definitely want to get back more into doing like some more horror and stuff too. I mean, I have been doing horror on my other yeah. channels, so I have that going on too. But you know, because there's a lot of new horror movies out that are like Renfield and stuff like that that we yeah. haven't talked Gotta about. Get to that. I mean, we did see Terrifier too, but we didn't do a review of it. Yeah, but. It was. I really liked it. It was like a lot better than I was expecting. I mean, I was expecting it to be good, but it was a little bit different than what I expected. But it was actually. But that's a good thing. You want to send us a flash drive? No, man. We fucking just get, go on Amazon and fucking get, buy it and get, write us down as the delivery, as the delivery address. Just send it here. That's how we. That's how people are sending it to us. Yeah, that's how Straight Zana Amazon. and Louie and stuff. They just go yeah. on and then they just put just put our address. Put our on delivery there. address on it. There it is. And they just send you can get them for a couple thing. bucks, ten but bucks, yeah. maybe eight bucks, six bucks, something like that. Depends on what it is. But yeah, I'm really glad. Casino's old, man. You'd be able to get that for cheap. When did that come out? Nineties, ninety four. Yeah. I want to say I'm not. I'm, I could be totally yeah. wrong. I you, thought it was nineties though. Yeah, and if you got Amazon Prime, it's free delivery. So you know. But yeah, I remember really liking Casino. But yeah, for some reason, like I like American, like you know, mob type movies, like gangster type movies. But for some reason, I like the British crime movies better. I don't know what it is. Like I said, I guess it's just, like, the dialogue, like, the way they talk is, like, fucking funny. Richard Brown said the weird girl in Terrifier 2 is great. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I really liked that movie, honestly. And like I said, I, I kind of feel like people have been like, oh, my God, it's the goriest thing ever. I'm like, mm, no, not really. It did have some great scenes in it, like, the great sequences, but I was kind of expecting it to be, like, a two-hour bloodbath, and it's really not like that. There was actually, like, a story and stuff, so I thought that was neat. 95. I was close. I was close. Yeah. But yeah, so we might do that uh, one of these days too. Like I said, we still, every time we do a show, <coughs> excuse me, every time we do a show, I always think of like five other movies that it's like, oh shit, we haven't reviewed that one yet either. Yeah. God, there's so many. We'll never run out of shit to talk about. Yeah, that's for and a sure. lot of them are great. Casino was great. Goodfellas was great. I can't believe yeah. we haven't done Goodfellas. Yeah. Like I said, I know we did the Godfather movies because somebody yeah. sent us the Godfather movies. Yeah. Um, that was Louie. Yeah, Louis, Louis, Louis sent, sent us the, the Godfather. Movies. Yeah, Louis, Louis sent us all three. Yeah, that's they're right. great flicks. Did them all. Yeah, and I haven't seen. I hadn't seen those in a long time. Although either, I so. agree with whatever everybody else said, three was not the not the best one. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't think, I think anybody I, thinks yeah, that, yeah. that was the best one. It was okay. It was all right though. It was okay. The best one was fucking Godfather two actually. Yeah, I think, I think most people like ninety nine percent of people say that the yeah. Godfather two. God, was I mean, the one. fucking the sequel is fucking better than the Godfather one. Godfather one of the very very few. Yeah. It was the Empire Strikes Back cases fucking, where that, yeah of, of, of gangster God, movies of, of gangster movies yeah it was exactly that yeah exactly that all right so I guess we're gonna wrap it up so thank you everybody for dropping by listening to us talk about this first guy Richie movie it's great if you haven't seen it um so tomorrow is Monday and uh, I have the day off because woo it's a holiday yeah so we're doing um a haunting Mondays and we're gonna do the next. Uh, episode of season five which is called The Exorcism of Cindy Sauer is I guess how you pronounce her last name S-A-U-E-R yeah. I barely remember this one like I was looking at I was making the um, the thumbnails for it and I saw like a couple of the stills from it on IMDB and one of them's crazy like I was like ooh I gotta use that one that's like fucking hilarious because she had like fucking crazy eyes and big teeth like they, they did like you remember that video for um that Soundgarden song Black Hole Sun where everybody's yeah. like fucking faces were distorted yeah. like it looked kind of like that and I was like ooh that's neat okay. so I wanted to use that and then I was like I kind of remember this one but yeah. we'll watch it tonight and like see what's because we were thinking about I don't know we, we were gonna go out tonight because they're having an extra memento mori but I think we might skip it because yeah. we have a we had a lot of stuff to do, and we had to buy so much shit this month. <sighs> this I, well, I made like a clothing haul. Yeah, like I said, because we're gonna be making more videos. We gotta make a we gotta shoot another video, another scene tomorrow too. Yeah. Um, I have a little bit more editing to do, and we're gonna start putting up stuff on OnlyFans. Yep. Um, Tom's actually gonna run that account. Yeah. So we gotta get the approval. Gotta get, yeah, uh, we gotta get to what do you call it. Uh, you gotta have our your, identity has to be. You have to have your picture like next to your yeah. ID so they the can idea see that has you're to be confirmed over eighteen and blah. And probably be both of us. And it, I got we got an account there already, but it's not a creator account. So once it becomes a creator, you guys will all know about it. We'll promote it, and 
uh, we'll start uh, selling subscriptions over there. Yeah, we got a bunch of shit. Like, we got a bunch of photos. We got enough we got material, it. yeah. We got it. So we're just going to start, like, parceling stuff out. We're yeah, going to start putting then, stuff up on there. Uh, every month we'll be able to do a couple more videos and a bunch and more photos every month. Yeah. At that point. It'll all but so that's what I did. I was like, so I went to Shein yesterday yeah. and just picked out, like, a bunch more outfits. Because I think I said on Friday night that we were actually going to go to Sweethearts. Uh, to look and see if they had some clothes and bras and stuff like that. And Sweethearts is still there. There's actually two locations, which I didn't know. But we went there and hadn't been there in such a long time. And I guess what happened was that they decided that they were going to have to go like more high end, like for specialty type and stuff. Straight stripper clothes. So they still have stripper clothes and like shoes and everything like that. But now they're like way expensive. Everything's 100 bucks. Everything is like 100, 119, yeah. like just for like a stripper. I mean, they're nice, but. Yeah, they're not that nice. But they're not one hundred and nineteen dollars nice. nice. No, and they so. got a lot of fucking sequins on them and fucking glittery. Very shit. sequiny. Everything was yeah, very sequiny. Yeah, and, and there's kind of a Latin flavor to everything. It's, that's not what we're looking for. So. so then, like, so after we did that, and then like we popped through like Victoria's Secret and see what they had in there. Yeah, and it's yeah, like they had, they had some nice shit in there too, but again, it's like kind of more exp like expensive for what it was. Overpriced and vanilla. So we kind of went. We were just like, fuck it. So we just came home and went on Shein and yeah. just picked out yeah. like two hundred dollars. Well, I just it was one hundred and thirty dollars, yeah. and then I spent fifty at Amazon yeah. like getting some bras. Shein and, and Amazon is really where all the slut clothes are. Yeah. Amazon got a good slut clothes. They do. And yeah, it's, you just gotta know cheap. what you're looking at. And Shein got I yeah. Shein I spent one hundred and thirty dollars. That's that was with shipping and everything. Yeah. Um. And I got how many outfits? Man, four or five of. Them, I got five, like six, five six dresses. Two more wigs. Two wigs. A mm -hmm. bunch of jewelry. A lot of nice some fucking, tights. A lot of nice tights. Spiderweb looking tights. All real goth looking shit. Uh, um, another skirt. Accessories. Couple like gloves, some, like some gloves. Yeah, cool gloves. Um, I got a shit ton of stuff. Yeah, like it, easily like seven eight outfits. Yeah, you can get it. You can for one hundred and thirty dollars. You can get a cute goth mini dress for twelve bucks. I was so mad though because it's like I had all this shit in my cart. Yeah. And then like I tried to pay for it and I tried to do PayPal and it just like sat there and looked at me, and then it timed out. Yeah. And it not only timed out and canceled the order, it threw everything out of the cart, and I had yeah. to start completely over again. Oh my god, I was so mad. Like Tom yeah. was like, "I'm getting away from you right now because you're because like, yeah. I was getting so frustrated. Like why? Because yeah, ah! yeah, yeah. I had spent right. so long like putting like yeah. finding all that stuff and yeah. putting it all in there, and I had it all done, and then like they just threw it all out of my cart, and I had to find everything What's over cool again. About Shein, the Shein app, S H E I E I N Shein. If you know how to search, man, they have. The women's stuff's better than the men's stuff. It's just that's just. I think that's true everywhere. You can get clothes based upon genre. They, not only do they have goth, they have punk, they have fairy core. Yeah. Which is that's some nice shit in there. I got a real cool. I got a couple yeah. dresses from that section too because yeah. I was like, ooh, that's nice. Fairy core. If you guys don't know what that is, it's kind of like goth mixed with, uh, fucking um, hippie kind of. Yeah, it has like a grunge. little a little hippie grunge like yeah. '90s kind of flavor. Yeah, to it's it. kind of like the stuff you know. Uh, uh, fucking Babes in Toyland or fucking Mazzy Star was wearing they're like little mini yeah like 90's indie it definitely indie has that kind of flavor yeah to yeah it. it's nice it's kind of like gothy looking but then it also has kind of like butterflies and mushrooms yeah, earth and tones. like earthy type earth of earth tones. Tones. but yeah. yeah I got a couple dresses like yeah. along that line that had like butterflies on it but they looked kind of like antique -y, yeah. like the colors so I thought that was like kind of yeah. cool but yeah so but that's I mean not bad $130 yeah. for He's like six or seven outfits. I recommend I the Shein app. Yeah, they have guys stuff there. They even have like military boots, but the the, the price is like forty bucks for military style, you know, fucking uh, brown boots. I never haven't tried them. I've never seen those brands here. I don't know if they're actually mil spec, but they have a lot of military style stuff in there uh, and camping survival type stuff, whatever. They didn't really have good goth guy goth stuff though. It's just. Well, they probably, I mean, they probably don't have as much. The of, customers aren't there. Yeah. I, I feel yeah. like girls are mostly. It's girls, yeah. Like 90% of the clientele yeah. for that. Yeah. Jones Perkins said, where's the OnlyFans link? Well, like I said, there's nothing on there yet, yet. But and I what, may change what is the you, name? Oh, we may, okay. We may change the name. Because right now it's just called what? Like Tom, Tom and Jen. Jen? It's just called Tom called and Tom Jen. called Tom and Jen, but um, we're going to change that name to something else. We're going to have links uh, to it later. Yeah. Because, like I said, tonight and tomorrow. Yeah. Um, or maybe tomorrow. 
that's one of the main priorities is we're gonna, I, we have like a bunch of photos. They don't really need that much touching up because most of them turned out okay. Most of them don't need any touching up. Yeah, I don't think they do. Um, yeah. But we're gonna do, um, we have like some videos edited, but we're gonna do like little one minute like teaser clips yeah. like to put up on there. So we're gonna do that too. Yeah, um, for a certain amount of tips, you want to tip us 10, 20 bucks, something like that, then you'll get the full. Yeah, and we'll like I said, we gotta shoot another clip. scene tomorrow too, yeah, sure, which yeah. we've already pretty much planned out. Yeah. But. And I'll, I'll probably set it up to where it's like five or six bucks bucks a month to subscribe. So you'll see the data stream and you'll be able to go in and tip and give suggestions and buy things, you know. It'll be like that. I think, well, once, once the creator count starts, I'll see if there are different kind of formats that I can run it in. I don't know if I could have like a menu where you can go in and just buy videos or we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But yeah, we're definitely gonna. That's gonna be yeah. the main priority. Tomorrow. But you're not gonna have access to free full length fucking 15, 20 half hour videos. It's not gonna be like that at first. Because we have some that are like twenty minutes. Yeah, and you have to sell those. You know, what I mean, yeah. you can't just give them away on a subscription. But we will have clips. But of there'll them be stuff in there. Yeah, you, we will have cl clips of them that you yeah. can watch though. Yeah, like that are shorter. We'll see. We'll see how it is. Yeah, depends on how long this stuff. If it's not that long, then maybe we'll put it up five minutes, six minutes. Maybe we can put that in there for free because we do have some stuff like that. Yeah. So it'll be a cheap subscription, and for if you want more, you got to pay a little bit more, and we'll give you like a free video or something. Yeah, and we're gonna we'll keep doing. It. Like I said, we'll it's just not a free do. Video, but we'll sell you a video. Fo we'll just yeah. post photos and videos. Yeah, like I said, Tom's photos. gonna run it like the social media thing, and yeah. so like I can just like send him photos and. From what I've seen so far, it kind of runs like it kind of runs like Facebook. Yeah, where you just have a feed and you There's can a feed put and you drop stuff in it. You know. Right. It's like Facebook, but like X rated. Yeah. Like you can put whatever you want, yeah. like in your feed, but not. But only people that subscribe to you can see it. Yeah. So it's not like in public or anything. Yeah. Jen doesn't really have time to run it. Yeah. So I was really happy when he yeah. said today. He's like, "Well, yeah, I can. I can run it." And I was like, yeah. "Well, that's good because I." Want you know, to and if, fucking, if you guys are <laughs> regulars of this show, if you want to talk to her, you can just talk to her here at a live stream. You don't need OnlyFans to talk to her. You just that's just to see her. Yeah. You know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know. Uh, all right, so I guess we're going to wrap it up. Like yeah. I said, tomorrow we're doing a haunting. We might do it. Should we do it earlier, or should we do it at 7.30 like usual? What's that? The um, the haunting show. Because normally we would do it at 7.30 because I'd be working. No, you can do it earlier. We can get it out of the way. That but way we can we... do it early. Maybe we'll do it at 6, like that we way did it today, because I'll be home. You know? Yeah, we might even be able to do it earlier than that. Because if you want to get it out of the way, because we have production stuff we can do. Yeah, that's true. Because I don't know. We'll we see might be able to do it in the afternoon. People won't care. It's a holiday. I mean, I'll announce it because You'll I are, it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, just whenever it is. Because right. I actually did already like make a teaser thing for it and like scheduled it, yeah. but I can change that. And out, people like, in other countries easy. might appreciate it. It might be end up a bit more better for their time zone. Yeah, that's true. We'll go there, All right, so we will see you guys again tomorrow uh, to talk about some ghosts and shit like that, or possession, I guess, is the one we're gonna watch. So thanks everybody for dropping by, and we'll see you guys again tomorrow. Bye.